welcome uh, the, it was a great session today hope you all enjoyed them i'm ap a senior dev at nib and i'm here to share some information about software engineering and how i decided to be a developer what is software engineering as stated by extra computer science is no more about computers than about as astronomy is about telescope it's not about sitting in front of computers and coding all day software engineering is a field where you design develop update and maintain a product which is consumed by millions of customers it's a huge responsibility to build an efficient and reliable product for all our users there goes lots of planning and hard work to give an idea a life what's our daily routine a life from outside may look like the one stated in the image but trust me it's not depending on what role you choose in IT your day can differ i can share what my day looks like um it usually starts with a morning meeting called stand up where everyone from the team uh, come together dis uh, discuss what they did on the previous day what's today's agenda and if they need any coding buddy to help solve the problems then we code we code we test we make sure everything works as expected uh, before deploying the code to production sometime when a new requirement kicks in we team members meet and discuss what new feature is how we are going to implement it and when are we planning to release it every story we work on has some challenges and learning involved so our work is never monotonous there's lots of pair programming working with another coder to solve problem review teammates code maintaining existing code and so on uh do i need to know coding to be in this industry as explained by many many speakers today you don't mostly roles in it are divided into three categories software jobs consist of programmers team leads business analysts quality analysts and so on hardware jobs like network and it infrastructure related job which does not require coding but uh, may require some uh, knowledge about the requisite area and operational jobs like sales admin hr finance by since these kind of jobs they do not require coding at all there are some other uh, roles which are non techies listed here um how i ended up in it i started my career as a quality analyst and um, i was testing banking applications while writing automation scripts i started developing interest for coding most it companies have online portals available for training and certifications i used those to upskill myself after a few years i decided to get a formal education in computer science and hence enrolled myself in uni and decided to do masters in computer science i joined an insurance company in usa as a software developer after that there was no looking back i am still working and uh, i worked in banking insurance retail domain as a developer till now uh due to vast learning experiences it was easy to uh, cope up with the upcoming technologies and keep up to date with them and continue work uh, as a developer benefits uh being in it it was very uh, easy for me to work in different work environments i was able to change domains uh, with the same skill set last year i was working in banking domain and today i am working in an insurance company uh when pandemic hit many people lost their jobs but being in it we were able to work remotely and keep our jobs work from home benefits tops the list you save travel time which you can invest in your hobbies uh flexible work hours allow you to uh, work from home uh manage your work and home simultaneously there are some other benefits listed here as good pay and job security uh these benefits uh they help me to keep my uh, to, they help me to shape up my career and uh, and decide my career and hope they help you too on this note i would like uh, to say thank you and pass it on to shawn to to take over thank you thanks ap um hi everyone my name's shawn i'm a software developer at nib um like probably a few of you in this room i was introduced to tech through video games when i was a teenager um I was fascinated with how they worked because ultimately without a good understanding of software they almost seem like some kind of magic. So in my pursuit to understand video games I started creating custom Minecraft servers for me and my friends. We would change game rules to shake things up or install impressive community made mods and plugins. If you've ever dealt with mods before you know what it's like. You need to manage files, deal with bugs and maybe even write some code. So during this whole process I started to learn how a programmer might think and little did I know it but I was actually getting my first taste of a tech career. Uh, ultimately we had a lot of fun and my friends still talk about how much they loved messing with Minecraft to this day. 
I discovered early that you can have a lot of fun if you're willing to look under the hood of your favorite tech, and your friends ultimately will love you for it too. Just shifting gears a bit here, um, I want to talk about how I went from someone who played around with tech after school to someone that was working with tech in their daily life. For me, design and technology was a huge turning point. It's an HSC course where you can design anything you want in any field and document the design process. Maybe you already know about it. I saw this course as an opportunity to build a real product and start developing out my programming skills. Design is all about solving problems, and luckily at the time, there was a clear problem in the forefront of my mind. Back in 2015, Facebook Messenger was used by everyone in my cohort at school, and maybe it still is. There was a mounting distrust of Facebook in the tech community at the time that hadn't really reached the average person yet, and I wanted to do something about that. So over roughly 12 months, I designed and developed a privacy-focused instant messaging app called Comet. I targeted it towards people at my school, but anyone could use it. And this process involved extensive research, a load of experimentation, and required me to develop some skills that I had never really considered before. Ultimately, the final product wasn't that great. Uh, it was a bit broken and there were some weird design decisions. Um, and I just committed to a project that was way too large for a single high school student to complete. To be honest, it was a struggle. But through that struggle, I learned a lot. I had a really great time and I developed something that I was really proud of. And building Comet ultimately ignited something for me. My takeaway from that whole experience is that projects are amazing. I was hooked and suddenly I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my career. So I chose to go to university and I studied a Bachelor of Computer Science. I wanted to build great things with like-minded individuals and to my surprise, I wasn't alone. You spend a lot of time collaborating and meeting new people at university and it turns out lots of people have also discovered this passion for building things. I've seen such a wide range of projects from people with interest in loads of different areas. Just to highlight a few, this image shows a fighting game controller that my friend built one weekend. He just got some, some buttons and a microcontroller and a cardboard box. And the benefit of putting it in a cardboard box is that he could easily configure the buttons to be in the right position for the way that he played. I've also seen someone set up a, a sensor array on a bonsai tree to measure whether the, whether the tree needs water or light and just automatically maintain it. So if you're into plants, maybe that's a side project for you. Ultimately, what I'm trying to show you is that in tech, you can bring your own passion. It doesn't really matter what interests you. Tech is just a tool that you can apply to any field. My journey through tech looked like this. I started with an interest in video games, which eventually became a love for projects, and then finally became, finally turned into a Bachelor of Computer Science, which helped me form my passion into an employable skill. And now I have a rewarding career in tech. But your journey could look totally different. Perhaps you have an interest in astronomy or art or finance or agriculture. And you can take those interests and apply them in interesting ways. You can make side projects or experiment with machine learning or algorithms. And then you can get an education, maybe even just through tutorials on YouTube or coding boot camps. But the end result is the same. You end up with a rewarding career in tech. So to summarize everything I've tried to tell you today, a career in tech is absolutely for you, no matter your passions or interests. It's a super rewarding industry. And I'd like to hand you now over to Trenton, who comes from a music, music background, to talk about his journey in tech. Thanks. Hey folks, how's it going? Well, uh, my name's Trenton and I'm a graduate product designer here at NIB. So uh, first things first, I should probably tell you what that means. So as a product designer, um, you're responsible for asking big questions. So things like uh, why or who or what, where, when, how, and sometimes in that order and a few times over until you really feel like you get a problem. Because ultimately it's about finding the best way to actually solve problems. It's a really cool space to get your hands dirty and with big ideas and a big influence on how things actually work. So we're often called UX designers. So you may, may have been in earlier for, for uh, uh, Joe and Nadia from Mudbath there, both UX designers, um, where UX stands for user experience. It's a pretty broad umbrella term. It actually means you're responsible, um, sometimes in part or sometimes in whole, for an end-to-end -end experience interacting with an app or a service or a technology. So end-to-end -end means from when you pick up your phone to use an app to putting it right back in your pocket, or when you open a website to go on a shopping spree, right through to hitting pay now and closing the window again. So our job is to map out that journey, thinking about every decision that you make along the way, both consciously and subconsciously. As designers, our job isn't really to make things work. We actually spend most of our time figuring out how things should work. How should it look or how should it move? You know, what should it do when I do this or what shouldn't it do when I do that? You know, why does that even matter? Who is using this? How or where are they using it? And do people even want to use it full stop? Simply put, we actually spend most of our time thinking about people, not so much about code or technology. It's actually about influencing technology to better serve people and actually not the other way around. 
speaking of people, I've found getting into design is it's a really cool spectrum with so many amazing people in these really interesting niches and specializations, all focused on different parts of a particular user's end to end journey. So depending on what you enjoy, there's a space for you. If you love meeting new people and working out how to solve problems, you might be great as a service designer or custom experience designer. Or if you love making things beautiful or interactive, you could be great uh, as an in interaction or motion designer. If you're a bit like me and you're OCD about things lining up or being consistent, you might be great at creating UIs, which is user interfaces, or even uh, what's called a DLS, which is a design language system. It's all the building blocks that actually makes up all the different things you see on a website. If you love talking to people and getting to the root of a problem, you might be a really great uh, UX researcher or strategist, or if you love to just communicate ideas in you know small little spaces, you could be a UX writer focusing on how content influences the way that people actually understand or experience your product. So one cool thing about design is that every single one of these, these responsibilities actually exists in every possible tech space. And getting into design, the reality is you probably actually have to do most of them at some point, but when you think about the number of different spaces you can actually grow into in every single field, it is so hard to get bored because there's just so many places you can go with it. So no matter what you're passionate about, if that's climate change or gaming or empowering victims of violence or cryptocurrency or accessibility or sports and fitness or politics or shopping or music, all of these spaces are embedded in tech because tech exists where people exist. Tech is about people. It's about making our lives easier. I got into tech because I'm mad passionate about music. I've been in a band for oh, probably about 10 to 12 years now, and I've been really lucky to see a massive chunk of the world. So all across Europe and the US, um, through to some more interesting uh, places like Singapore, Malaysia, and South Africa. And I've had some incredible experiences along the way, but I feel like the things that I've brought with me later in life have mostly come from one-to-one -one conversations I got to have along the way. Because it was through those conversations I got to find out why people cared about what it was that we did. Because of that experience that I had about five years ago, a couple of friends of mine had started putting together ideas for an app that they thought might solve some of the problems that musicians like me had, pretty much getting paid. Now, I still love music, but let's just say there's a reason I've moved into tech more recently. But the basic idea that they brought was how might we take what Twitch has done for gaming and apply that to music. Now, this is before Patreon and uh, Cameo and a few other platforms like that had popularized these direct to consumer platforms. And certainly before COVID had normalized digital experiences like what we're doing right now in lieu of real life ones. But seeing that business model that we'd kind of thought of succeed in these other spaces felt incredible because even though what we'd come up with was way too big for four of us to actually tackle in a you know in our friend's basement we've actually seen so many of the ideas we had just come alive through other platforms and it feels great like i'm a visual person so even though i knew how this thing might work i actually had trouble communicating it sometimes or even getting my own head around the ins and outs of what it might do until i could picture it so i actually took these conversations and read everything that i could on UI design or app visual design and started to putting together this prototype of what it could look like. And in retrospect, the prototype only really scratched the surface, but I was hooked. I could make a prototype that I could put into people's hands that got them excited about something that I believed in. And I didn't have to code anything, which is great because I suck. But after that, I sought out how to educate myself further so I could do this for real. I ended up starting a bit of a journey um, undertaking a, a short, just a short course um, through RMIT online. And then I took on a UI course not long after. And to that end, there's a ton of different like boot camps and degrees and courses out there, as well as entire sections of the internet carved out for learning this stuff. So don't be afraid to seek it out and try and find the best place for you to learn. You know, there isn't necessarily a quick fix, but Sometimes learning this much allows you to kind of teach yourself this much, or sometimes learning this much allows you to keep going beyond that. So you learn by doing. So building out your personal projects and portfolio is a really great way to really get a feel for what you're good at and where you can apply it. Ultimately, though, I found that it was actually people that brought me here to NIB. Um, coming from a different industry, um, it was a bit tough to kind of just get my foot in the door. So I actually networked for almost a year, having coffee with pretty much anyone I could find in the space who would actually make time for me to you know get their perspective on tech and design just to learn and through that process i met you know one person then the next and the next to eventually met a rad designer who actually worked here at nib and he encouraged me to apply for a role that came up i didn't actually get it but um pretty soon after that you know the work that i had done 
meant that I was actually in a position to take on a new opportunity that came up very soon after. And yeah, um, I guess that's, what do they say? <laughs> um, the rest is history, but I get to turn up to work every day uh, here in my music studio in my backyard. Um, I get to make stuff, talk to people, solve problems and just keep learning. Because for me, this has been this adventure of continuous learning. And I really hope your own journeys give you as much enjoyment as I've had um, in taking this on. You know, it's going to take commitment, patience and certainly a lot of perseverance. But honestly, working in tech is so very much worth it. So I guess that's me. Um, I think we're going to open the floor to you, Flex. Now, if you have any questions about tech or our journeys into it, uh, go for it. It's all yours. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Um, the first question is, is your work primarily individual or do you work in groups or teams? I'll let Sean answer this. Sure. Um, I think it's a mix. Like um, throughout the day to day, you might be doing some individual work. Maybe you're focused on solving a particular problem, but there's a lot of teamwork too. You, you, um, sometimes you run into problems that you just need an extra pair of eyes on that you get another developer to come in and help you out with, or um, perhaps you get the whole team together to swarm on a particular design problem. Like you're not sure how to communicate something properly to the user. So you get everyone in and, and the more minds you have on it, the better the solution generally is. So I'd say, I'd say a pretty good mix. Um, if I wanted to apply for a job here, what would be the best way to learn about job vac vacancies? Uh, I think we post our jobs. We post our jobs in a number of places. We post them um, on LinkedIn. We post them uh, on Seek. Generally, a good way, the best way to find out though is to is to get in contact with some NIB people, um, make some connections. Like we're happy to talk to you, the three of us. Um, so reach out to one of us, and, and we're happy to share them. I'll let AP answer the next question. Has there been a really big project you have worked on at NIB? Uh, it's been, I think, almost four months I joined NIB, so I'm still new to NIB, but in past I have worked in um, in different companies and yes, I've been part of uh, big projects, uh, especially for, uh, especially in banking during COVID times for loan applications. So it's been an amazing um, experience how uh, team collabs and um, and work together to uh, to build a product. So yeah, not at NIB, but uh, do have an experience before. Yep. What do you like most about your work and what do you like least about your work? I'll let AP answer this one as well. <laughs> sure. Uh, the most I think um, I love when um, I see a product which I worked on and people using it, it uh, gives me a proud feeling that I have worked on it and uh, uh, it's really amazing to see out there people using it. And the worst, there is nothing worse. Um, I think uh, this is a field where you have to, like if you choose to be a developer, you need to be technologically, technically strong and uh, you have to keep learning. So there is nothing bad in it. Uh, if you're passionate about learning, uh, then I think uh, you, you will enjoy every bit of it. You get time to do what you want. You, you can invest uh, time in learning new things, not necessarily in, in coding, but anything you, you wish for. So there is nothing bad, nothing bad, I think, um, in this job. Yep. I'll let Trenton answer the next question. Do you have any jobs on the side? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been in, in the band, which has kind of been, I guess, a hobby slash uh, career, kind of a bit of both. <laughs> Certainly pay is closer to a hobby than a career, but um, I think that's pretty lucky um, compared to most. But um, but yeah, since I've started here, um, only in the last couple of months, actually, I've probably <laughs> struggled a little bit to make some time for music. But um, now that I'm settling in and getting a feel for how things work here, I'm, I reckon I'm be able to start doing that. But that's that's for fun. I mean, it, you know, we're working from home, which does give you a bit more time and flexibility to kind of do what you want with the extra time yeah. that you have. Trenton, did you need to study any qualifications to get where you are at now in the tech industry? Uh, yes and no. Um, so I came through the boot camp route, um, which there's a bit of talk around the design field at the moment about boot camps in particular, um, because quite often there's a lot of places out there that saying, you know, study this for six to eight weeks and you'll know UX. It's almost like my, um, Neo in the Matrix downloading, I know Kung Fu, it, you know, it, but I guess that show me is really the, the key point that comes around. Like, 
Um, for me, I learned a lot of things that let me kind of translate my own self-led experiences from the last 10 years or so. So short uh, model story is the short course courses of boot camps. I did two um, short courses through RMIT online and they were fantastic. They were built with a, a UX company called Simplicit. Um, so it had a really good uh, intelligent view of it. Um, but going into a degree, you get so much more time to actually explore because a lot of boot camps just kind of very much blaze over the top of things. So it's it's more about your learning and experience, I think, than the actual piece of paper that you get at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, the next question is for Sean. What are some common career paths in this field? Um, I think, well, there's the, the obvious developer route, but but that's not the only one. You can you can take a design route like Tranton has. Um, there's plenty of people that they'd like to take management routes or um, uh, product management or or uh, just general kind of um, developer management. I think those are those are the main ones. But you could also be a QA engineer where you um, actually test products and look for bugs, try and make sure that the the products that we're releasing are problem free. Basically, um, I, I'd say those are the main main four. Yeah. Um, if you could do it all over again, would you choose the same path for yourself? If not, what would you change? I'll let Sean answer this as well. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I think I think I, I wouldn't change anything. I, I'm I'm happy with where I've ended up. NIB is a fantastic company to work for, um, and I really enjoy the the work that I that I do on a daily basis. So, I think at the at the risk of uh, of changing that, I wouldn't change anything. I'm happy with where I've gone. Uh, the next question is for AP. What is it like being a woman in the IT industry? Uh, it's. Uh, I don't think uh, it's about women and men. Uh, we both uh, get same privileges uh, being in IT. But yes, uh, when you consider work-life balance, um, I think I'm really grateful. I have a one year old and uh, it's been an amazing journey till now. I'm able to uh, keep up my job and take care of her as well. So uh, as listed earlier, the benefits in IT are, uh, are really good. And uh, being a woman, I'm able to do what I want and take care of my family as well. So it's great. Uh, the next question is for Sean. Sean, are you still a gamer and what's your favorite game? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still a gamer. Um, uh, I don't know, just whatever my friends are playing at the time. Um, we've been we've been playing around with the Battlefield 2042 beta recently. Um, yeah, just just anything that's going really. Yeah. I've been enjoying. Um, I've been enjoying too. If I can just tack on to the end of that question. Um, I've, I was working on a like a, a hack almost for Minecraft where you could sort of like. Um, see the the communication between Minecraft and the server, and then actually change things as they communicate. So that was pretty fun. So yeah, I'm definitely still a gamer, still doing stuff with video games. Yeah, um, I'll let Trenton answer the next question. How has COVID affected how developers work? Uh, well, I can I can only really speak for the developers that I've worked with as a designer, but. Um, for us at NIB, for example, um, we, all, we all work from home um, and our company actually moved recently um, to this 80% work from home model even bef even beyond oh. COVID. So I think it, it's cool because we've all got, you know, our own space. Like we've all got this, we can set up our spaces the way we want to use it. Um, you know, there's certainly a few things we miss, like going for a coffee or um, a drink after work um, or being able to just kind of reach out across the desk. But I think... Um, I think it's really opened a lot of uh, people's eyes to what remote working can look like. And I think it's a really exciting future where that work-life balance is being more appreciated. And I think it makes better, you know, better employees and better developers, better designers, because we have that space. We know we're in our own space where we're so much happier um, when we are in a space that's familiar and safe. So we, I think, yeah, I think it's going to make a big difference in, in going forward. That answer the question? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, the next question I'll let Sean answer again. What are the most important coding languages to know and what is used at NIB? Sure, um, that's a good question. Um, you know, if you're if you're still learning, if you're learning about programming, there isn't really a best program language to know. It's really about getting into that into that mindset. Um, programmers think a certain way. We're, we're, we're problem solvers, and it's a it's a way that you can learn, right? So so. Just pick whatever language interests you. Like if if there's a particular um, 
if there's a particular thing you want to do, like if you want to build a website, then start with JavaScript. Or if you want to build a desktop application, start with a language that you can build a desktop application in. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, at NIB, we use uh, JavaScript a lot, TypeScript, which is an extension on JavaScript. Um, and and I think we have some some .NET apps kicking around C Sharp as well. But yeah, it you can transfer skills between programming languages. So so don't stress about learning a particular one. Just Hi. learn anything. It's good. Uh, I would like to add uh, one more thing. Like uh, right now, we are uh, in that part of uh, tech world where sitting now, you cannot decide what you are going to work uh, with in next five years. The technology is changing so rapidly. So I would like to suggest people who are interested in developing uh, to go with uh, the basic courses like object-oriented programming. If if they offer in university, I haven't uh, studied here in Australia, but if you get an opportunity, do uh, those courses which have strong basics of coding, and then uh, I'm pretty sure you can pick up any coding language if your basics are strong. Absolutely. Um, I think we have time for only one final question, and it is for AP. What are your long-term uh, career goals? I would, um, as I said, I, I'm enjoying my work right now, and uh, I see myself working in this industry um, for at least next 10 years. I, uh, but definitely, I do want to grow in my career, so it's not just restricted to development. I am planning to do some courses which are available online to get more into um, managerial kind of stuff uh, where I can deliver the product. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would definitely like to stick to an IT career, but uh, may uh, may plan to move ahead of, uh, of being a developer. I, I definitely want to see myself growing. Thank you for sharing your experience at NIP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you awesome. for having us here.